Welcome back to the channel. My name is Douglas and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Mini Fuse 2 from Arturia. So this is a really small, compact audio interface and it's perfect because I've been traveling for work a lot. You can probably tell I'm in a different location than my usual videos. I'm not in my studio and I've been kind of lacking on the uploads because I've been so crazy with my day job, but I've got a lot of controllers that I've ordered that have come in and a ton of videos to make. So I'm really excited to get back into a regular upload schedule. So the Mini Fuse 2 is perfect because I'm away from my focus right right now. And I wanted to open this up very first time, open it up, plug it in, show you guys how to set it up. I'm gonna be using it to make some additional videos while I'm here. And so as we open this up, so this is the Mini Fuse 2. It's a two by two. So basically two inputs, two outputs. It does have MIDI in and out, the traditional five pin MIDI. It's powered by the computer through USB. There's no actual power adapter for this. So it's USB-C and we're gonna open this thing up. In here we have uh, just some quick step instructions and a little card that tells what's included in the pack. It comes with Ableton Live Light, a bunch of sounds. And if we pull this out, I'm gonna set the box aside, but I am going to take the USB cable out of here. I like this cable. It's got a little bit of a braided feel to it. Feels really nice. And it's traditional USB to USB-C. So if your computer doesn't have a USB-C port, most do now, but if it doesn't, you'll still be able to use this because it has a traditional USB and then the USB-C mini USB there. So this interface, here it is. Let's pull it out of this bag here, protective sleeve. And it's, it's really skinny. I didn't realize how skinny it was. It's small, compact, super light, rubber feet on the bottom. Let's go over the front first. So we have two combo inputs with phantom power. And these can take XLR or quarter inch inputs. You have gain knobs, which feel really solid. There's no play in them. Really nice feel to those. A little bit of a tactical rubber feel. This main volume knob right here. So if you have these plugged into studio monitors, this would control the main outputs. You have this mix right here. Now, this is really cool and you don't see this on every audio interface. I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. And then you have the volume knob for your headphones. So I'm gonna take my headphones here and we're gonna to start to plug this in. I'm gonna show you how all this works. So the headphones, we're gonna go in there. We're gonna take the left and the right from my MPC key and we're gonna go into the two in the front. Before we do that, let's take a look at the back. We have the left and the right outputs. So if you were using studio monitors or something like that, you'd go out of here into those MIDI in and out. So let's say we wanted to take this keyboard and we wanted to record the MIDI notes into our DAW. We could do that with just a traditional five pin MIDI cable and go out of our keyboard or whatever controller and into um, the audio interface here. And then this audio interface would then allow us to record those MIDI notes on the computer. Then we have a hub, which is a really cool feature here too, is we can kind of extend the USB power from here and power a controller or something like that that needs USB power. So it has this hub USB here. And then of course the USB-C. So we're gonna plug this in and that's what's gonna go to our computer. And we're gonna plug that into our USB on the computer. So we've done that. Now we can see that these lights come on and flipping over to the computer, we have this folder that opened up on our computer here. So click here to get started. We have this little file, double click on that and it's gonna open up in your browser and it's gonna take you to, uh, I'm just gonna accept the cookies and it takes you to Arturia's website. There's a readme text here, gives you just some instructions on how to download the free software, how to get started. You're gonna to wanna to register the audio interface. That's gonna give you access to all of the freebies and the goodies that come with it. But we're gonna skip that for now because I wanna move right on to the setup portion. So I'm gonna close out of these and we're gonna go ahead and open up Pro Tools and take a look at what this looks like from a DAW perspective. Now you could use the included Ableton Live Lite. You could use another DAW if you use that. Uh, I'm going to use Pro Tools here because I know Pro Tools pretty well and it's a, a good way to visualize the audio interface and what's going on here. While that's turning on here from the Pro Tools side, what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the gain knobs down on the front and I'm going to plug in my left side into number one 
and my right side of the keyboard into number two. Now we'll go through and we'll set the levels here and then we'll record a little take. And one thing that I wanted to note here is this volume knob here is gonna to correspond to the left and the right outputs here. So again, if you have this plugged into an audio interface, you could be using the headphones, you have your port or your level knob for the headphone port, and then you have this big knob for your main left and right going out of the outputs on the back. So then we have this knob right here. So what this knob is gonna do is it allows us to transition what we're hearing in the headphones between the inputs coming into the audio interface versus the output from the computer that's coming in through the USB and would be getting sent out through this left and right in the out. That can also feed through the headphones so we can use uh, a mix of the input and the output, just the output from the computer or just the input from our inputs coming into the audio interface. Pretty cool, play around with that. It may be helpful depending on the latency you have from your computer. That can be helpful uh, when you're recording so that you're not hearing the latency um, from the computer. So mess around with that, see what works for your setup. Let's flip back over to Pro Tools here and let's go into our setup and playback engine. So in Pro Tools, this is where we're gonna go in and I don't see the mini fuse showing up here. So let me do a little troubleshooting and I'll come back here in the next clip and show you what I figured out. And after a little research, I'm back. So of course, as this is my first time pulling the interface out and getting it up and running, I found that you have to actually follow the instructions. So if we go here and we go back to the folder that opened up, you go to this website here and there's a button that says start. So you click that, it brings you over to a place where you have to register the audio interface with the serial number and then there's another number on the bottom called the unlock code. You put both of those in and it brings you over to this. So we're gonna install the Minifuse Control Center. I'm gonna click on that, it's gonna download that and we're gonna open that file up here and we're gonna run that installer, accept the agreement, next, next. And that's gonna install the drivers as well. So I'm gonna hit next. I opened up a couple different DAWs that I have and I wasn't seeing the audio interface at all. And so that kind of made me presume that maybe there's some drivers that need to be installed in order for this to work. So downloading the control center, which is a software version where you can see the inputs and outputs, and then that installs the drivers as well. So hopefully that takes care of our issue and we'll be able to use this within our DAW. So. We're finished the setup and I'm gonna check this little box and we're gonna open up the Minifuse Control Center. It says new firmware is, we're gonna remind me later on this. And it says Minifuse has been detected, click OK to complete the installation. So it says please connect, it's running through its things and we have the analog inputs here. So as we click on these buttons on the front, you'll see that it's a little buggy, but it does show me in real time the changes I'm making. So I turned the phantom power on and off. This is a little, I don't know what's going on with this. It's a little blinky blinky. But if I go to an empty project on the MPC key and we go ahead and let's grab the piano and then we'll turn up the inputs on this. Let's turn those up halfway, right? And then we're going to, let's leave our keyboard at half as well. So that's distorting, you can see. We don't want it to be in the red there. So I'm gonna pull the inputs on both the left and right down to about a quarter, we'll try that. So now we're down at about negative 25, 18 if I really slam the keyboard. So let's bring that up to about 10 o'clock. Let's bring those up just a little bit more. While you can't hear the piano, I'm hearing it through the headphones. You can see that the peak is right up and if I hit it really hard, I'm just getting a little orange. So we're gonna back it off just a little bit. And now let's go open up Pro Tools and see if we can get this to show up now. So let's go in and open up our Minifuse project. It's gonna open that up. Let's go to Setup, Playback Engine. And now we see the Minifuse ASIO driver right here. I'm gonna select that when you pick a new audio interface, your uh, project is going to refresh or your session's gonna refresh. 
Let's go ahead and do 256 samples. So the buffer size, the lower that is, the less latency there is, but the worse quality is. So if you get scratches and things like that, you may need to increase the buffer size. You gotta play with that number. We're gonna click OK. And this is gonna open our session back up. It says our input's missing. We're just gonna say, no, we don't wanna report. And we're gonna go into our IO here. And on the interface, we're gonna say, uh, mic line instrument one, two. So a little background here. Let me delete this track and I'll show you how I got to here. So if I delete this track, we're gonna go up to track new. And because we're recording both the left and the right inputs at the same time through uh, for the MPC key, I went ahead and did a stereo audio track. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna pin the two channels together. Let's go ahead and make this a track height of medium just so we can see a little bit better. And then here in the IO section, interface, mic one and two. And then in order to see any sort of input to activate this, we have to arm this. So now when we play it, now we can see that here. And if I bring my uh, knob here, this monitor knob, all the way over to the USB, now I can hear it coming through um, Pro Tools. So let's go ahead and record just a little session here. I'm gonna hit play. Go ahead and click stop, rewind, and we'll play this back. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and record just a little jam session for you here, just to kind of test the long-term recording of the interface. So I'm just gonna go in and pick just an atmospheric sound. Let's go with a distant flutter. Great, so let's go in and record this. I'm gonna hit play on this. And so now again, this is recording our left and our right inputs from the audio interface into Pro Tools. I'm gonna to hit start, play, we're gonna go back. and stop that. I think this would be the perfect audio interface for podcasting or if you're just maybe a solo guitar, vocal, could record both of those at the same time. Podcast, you could do two microphones into this interface here. They do have a larger interface with additional input, so you could check that out as well. Um, sometimes I need more, so my Focusrite has uh, more inputs than this, so that's at my studio. But for this, I mean, if I'm just recording a couple of inputs at once, this is perfect. It feels really clean to me. I'm gonna be using this in the next few videos. So you'll be able to kind of hear how this sounds as I play the Nord, which is behind me, the MPC key, make these videos. I'm gonna use this to capture all of the audio from the keyboards as I'm making those videos. So check out those videos and that'll give you an idea for the quality of sound. And I'll also run it through its paces to see how reliable it is and see how I like it long-term. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you've picked up the Minifuse 2, you're wondering how to get this set up on your computer, 
Basic steps are plug it into your computer, register and download the control center, and that's gonna install the drivers as well. This should show right up in your DAW. You may have to go up to the settings and enable that audio device or pick that audio device. Then you should be able to use it. You're gonna see the inputs on there. You're gonna see two if you're running them mono, one if you're running them stereo. Hopefully that was helpful for you kind of seeing me walk through that here in Pro Tools. But if you've got any questions, throw those down in the comments below. Also some really cool videos coming. I have two brand new controllers and another controller that I'll be making videos of along with additional videos of the MPC Key 61, the Nord Stage 3. Worship Program Pack 2 is coming really soon. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of those upcoming videos. You guys are awesome. Talk to you later.